Learning objectives include how various genes are transferred from one microbe to another. Uh, what is a lateral gene transfer? What is vertical uh, gene transfer? Horizontal uh, gene transfer? Types of lateral or horizontal gene transfer? And we'll also talk about some definitions. Genetics. It is the study of what genes are, how they carry information, and how information is expressed, and how genes are replicated. So this kind of knowledge is called genetics. What is a gene? Gene basically is a segment of DNA that encodes a functional product, although that functional product usually is a protein, but not always. Like transfer RNA, ribosomal RNA are typical examples of genes that are never trans translated into proteins. So when we talk or we say something about gene, we always try to think that, that there will be a protein associated with the gene, but that's not true all the time. Chromosomes, as you know, these are structures that contain the DNA. Of, they physically carry that hereditary information on them, and they, uh, in eukaryotic cells, they sit in the nucleus. Genome, if you collect all the genetic information in a cell, that is a genome. All the genes that are functional, non-functional, uh, they're all DNA. Whatever the DNA is there uh, is called genome. Genomics is the study uh, that we do at molecular level dealing with the nucleic acids. Genotype is the genes of an organism, and phenotype is the genotypic expression uh, in the form of things that we observe, like the height of people is a phenotypic expression. Color of the skin, color of hair, eyes, these are all phenotypes. But in the back, there is a genetic character or, or gene responsible for this phenotype. Now, genetic transfer in microbes is of two types. This is the organism, a parent organism, and this is the offspring. So a parent would replicate, it would... Um, duplicate its DNA, and the cell with the binary fission would replicate into two. And this daughter cell would receive the same set of genes that the parent has. This transfer of DNA from parents to offspring is called a vertical gene transfer. If the genes are given or they are transferred within the same generation, so in other words, within the offsprings, uh, this phenomenon is called horizontal or uh, lateral gene transfer. So there would be a donor and there would be a recipient. Say, for example, one gene is donated or transferred from this bacterial cell to this bacterial cell of the same generation. These are not uh, parent offspring relationship. The same bacterium. These are all, both of these are offsprings. Uh, this is called a lateral or horizontal gene transfer. Lateral or horizontal gene transfer has three mechanisms. One is transformation, the other one is conjugation, and the third one is transduction. We'll examine these one by one. During transformation, naked DNA is transferred from one organism to the other. This observation was made by Frederick Griffith, in 1928, he was working on this bacterium called Streptococcus pneumoniae. What he did, he injected this organism into a mice, and the mice died. Then he had another strain of Streptococcus pneumoniae that was non-pathogenic. He injected another mouse with it, and the mouse survived. And then he took the pathogenic Streptococcus pneumonia, heat killed this organism and injected into a mouse and the mouse survived. And then he did another beautiful experiment. He combined these two organisms, non-pathogenic, which was alive, and pathogenic, which was heat killed. So he combined these two together, injected another mouse, and, and surprisingly, the mouse died. Although the live 
uh, organism was non-pathogenic. And the pathogenic was killed here, heat killed. But interestingly, the mouse died. So he concluded that for some reason, the, these organisms that were live, they took up DNA from these killed organisms and acquired a pathogenic characteristic. So transformation can occur in vitro, in, even in broth culture, those organisms that die, they release their DNA, and that DNA is taken up by those organisms that are there in the same container. And this is a schematic diagra diagram that uh, tells you that this is a DNA naked lying in the medium. This is a bacterium, and this bacterium can acquire this DNA piece, and sometimes it gets integrated into the chromosome of the bacterium, and Whatever this gene was, that character would be acquired by this organism here. And if this DNA does not get incorporated or integrated into the chromosome, then it gets degraded. Those organisms that, that are able to take this naked DNA, we call them competent cells. And in nature, this ability of taking naked DNA is very limited. Only few species of bacteria or microorganisms are able to do that. But sometimes we can artificially introduce um, naked DNA in some organisms. And E. coli is a very common example in biotechnology. We, use, we make use of E. coli competent cells. Let's watch a video of this whole phenomenon. This will be more clear to you then. Transformation would become more... Uh, clear to you. Some bacteria are capable of taking up fragments of DNA from their surroundings and integrating the fragments into their own chromosomes by recombination. Cells capable of taking up DNA from their environment are said to be competent. Only a few genera of bacteria are naturally competent, such as the Streptococcus pneumoniae in this example, but other bacteria, including E. coli, can be made competent through simple laboratory treatments. The process of transformation was first observed by Frederick Griffith in 1928 while developing a vaccine for Streptococcus pneumoniae. Griffith observed two strains of the species, an R strain and an S strain. The unencapsulated cells of the rough or R strain of Streptococcus pneumoniae did not cause disease. When mice are injected with these cells, their immune system efficiently deals with this invader and the mice live. Cells of the smooth or S strain of Streptococcus pneumoniae produce a capsule that allows them to escape phagocytosis by the body's defensive white blood cells. When mice are injected with these cells, the mice die. Heat can be used to kill the smooth strain of Streptococcus pneumoniae. When mice are injected with these heat-killed cells, the mice live. Surprisingly, when mice are injected with a mixture of harmless heat-killed smooth strain cells and harmless live rough strain cells of Streptococcus pneumoniae, the mice die. Live smooth strain cells can be found in the blood of these dead mice. The harmless rough strain cells must have gained the genes to produce capsules like those of the virulent smooth strain cells. So in summary, transformation is basically uptake of uh, naked DNA by microbes. 